home service before realizing that she felt too ill to eat. She didn't know what to make of what had happened to her. I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. I don't know what to think of it. I don't know what to call it. I don't know if because I went there, is it still rape or is it me being vulnerable? Was it the glass of wine? What was it? I, don't, I couldn't even identify it. Nonetheless, talk about it. As she watched Jim Baker and John Fletcher on their telethon that night, she took comfort in being able to see that John Fletcher was in a TV studio and not following through on his promise to come back and see her again. But just when it seemed like she might spend the night in peace, John Fletcher walked into the room with another man from the telethon. Han begged Fletcher to help her get home. But Fletcher told her to relax, helped himself to her hamburger, and walked out leaving Han alone with the strange man who has never been identified. The man came over and sat on the edge of the bed. Han, still naked in her bloody sheets, told the man that he was sorely mistaken if he thought he was going to touch her. The man stammered that Fletcher had implied the two might do something together. Han told the man to get out. The man left, and Fletcher returned. He told Han he was disappointed she had sent the strange man away. Then he gave her exactly $129 for plane fare. He also reportedly told her he and Baker would be in touch. Incredibly, Han kept silent about the incident for years. Believe me, I don't want people knowing about this. What does it look like when a girl goes to a hotel room? How do I look good? You guys got the microphones, the Bibles, and the three-piece suit. I'm a girl from New York, from Massapequa. Who are they going to believe? In 1985, a concerned friend introduced Jessica to a law student and he quickly became Jessica's legal advisor. With his help, Jessica made a $265,000 deal with Baker's Ministry, PTL, to keep her secret for 20 more years. But rumors had already leaked out about Baker's one-day extramarital affair, and no one could stop the press from chasing them down. In 1987, the story broke in the Charlotte Observer, and the encounter in Florida wasn't the only salacious story that made headlines. Uh, we have to